Uh, would you go ahead and bow your heads and pray with me? Uh, God in heaven, uh, we thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, these kids that you have given to us. Thanks for the love uh, that we have for our kids. But more than that, we thank you for the love that you have uh, for our kids. Thanks for the chance to worship you and to hear from you. I pray that you'd speak to us now. Uh, help us not to miss a thing. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, welcome to Christ Community Chapel. Really glad you're here. Glad that you are a part. Welcome those of you tuning in. Uh, wow. Uh, last weekend, I'm still uh, buzzing from last weekend. We told you, or I told you that we were going to do something that we had never done before. And it was uh, what we called a spontaneous baptism. Uh, but we had no idea uh, that it was going to happen the way it happened. Uh, we have seven services on a weekend, starting with Saturday night, and then we have uh, three on Sunday here in the sanctuary and three over in East Hall. And out of those seven services, we had 451 uh, people get baptized. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> I'll just tell you guys this, that... You know, when I sat down uh, Saturday night after I, I gave the little message, I was sitting there going, I don't know if anybody's going to get up. I really didn't. And I finally got up because I couldn't see behind me. I got up and I went out that door to see. And the first person I saw was one of our volunteers. And I said, anything happened? He was going, oh, yeah, it's on. <laughs> like that. So we had a thought that if we had like 20 people get baptized on Saturday night, that that would be a really good thing, and we had between 60 and 70. So that meant that uh, we were scrambling for Sunday if, it, if we had the same kind of thing happen. So we, had, we were sending interns to, you know, Sam's Club to buy sports bras. It was crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff, but good. <clears throat> I wanted to, uh, we, our tech guys put together uh, a little two-minute video just to try to capture some of what happened last weekend, and I have to show it to you because we've been talking about it all week, and I know that if you were here, you've been thinking about it, so watch this. We have a theme for this year, and our theme is transformed in 2018. And the idea, the hope, the prayer is that we will be different in December than we are right now. Something happened in the first century. It was like a fuse was lit and it spread like lightning across the Roman Empire and the known world. When those people were baptized, what they were saying on the outside to a whole crowd of people is, I belong to someone and his name is Jesus. And I want you to know. And there's something about taking this step of being baptized that lit the fuse for them in the first century. And if you're ever going to be really transformed, then you have to have the same fuse lit. And this is what makes this weekend special, is that uh, we wanted to give everyone who has never been baptized as a believer an opportunity to be baptized today. This is your day. This is your day. been lit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 451 people, 451 stories, and we are collecting the stories now. And I just want to, I'm going to read you just uh, a part of a story because this uh, woman um, described it so well of what it meant to her. 
as she walked to get baptized. I, I'm not going to read her whole story. I wish I could. But this is what it, she says. Minutes later, I was dressed in a black T-shirt, black shorts, and comfortable undergarments. I stepped out of the tent with my outward identity crammed in the plastic bag and was directed to another table where the dear girl told me ever so kindly to fill out a name tag and place it on my right sleeve. Hmm, <laughs> That's interesting. We were then pointed in the direction that headed back to East Hall. That's where I first saw them, the long line of other believers who looked just like me, carrying the same white drawstring bag, wearing the same flip-flops. Were they on the right feet? <laughs> they were cheap flip-flops. <laughs> and standing in line to be baptized. And then this, this is what I love. Is this what heaven looks like? Is this what heaven feels like? It had to be a glimpse of it because for the first time in my life, there was nothing but equals among us. We were all the same, doing the same thing for the same reason. Not one of us was poorer or richer, older or younger, dumber or wiser, thinner or thicker. Nope. We were all simply believers doing what faithful believers do. When it came my turn to be baptized, I stepped into the pool where Pastor Jim met me with the biggest smile, and then he said my name. Wow, love the detail of the name tag. Thank you for every smiling, encouraging, kind person who had something to do with that morning's baptism. I will never forget what you did. Thanks for holding my hand while I jumped. All right. And I, uh, I read a story of one of our volunteers, and if you volunteered, thanks so much for doing that. We had over 400 people volunteer to help last weekend, and we needed all of them. But one of the volunteers wrote me, and she said that uh, she was at first disappointed. She was stuck in the back where uh, she didn't get to see the baptisms. But then she said, I was in the wet changing area, which means I was in the room where they came after they were baptized. And that room was filled with, with laughter and tears and joy. And she said, I couldn't have been in a better spot. I don't think there was a bad spot, a uh, bad seat in the whole production of what happened last weekend. And I want to tell you this, if you took that step, or if you just were impacted, like all of us were impacted, there's a momentum that builds with obedience. So don't lose that momentum. I'll let it carry you on towards more and more transformation. That's the plan. And the last thing I have is this, that, um, you know, you, you saw in the video that at the beginning I, I used the image in the first century of a fuse being lit and then spreading across the Roman Empire. And at the end of every service, the only thing I could think of uh, to say was the fuse has officially been lit here. And uh, somebody pointed out that there were 451 people who were baptized. And 451 degrees Fahrenheit is when paper ignites. That's, when f that's the heat of fire when it burns. How cool is that? All right, that's it. Thanks. All right, this is another special weekend, uh, so next week we'll return to normal, whatever normal is for our church. But this is Kids Ministry Weekend, and I love this because uh, I love uh, what uh, we do with our kids. I love that we have a, a great space for them, and I love what they're learning. Um, I, the text that I'm going to use is, uh, is just a single verse, and it's from the shortest verse, our ver shortest book in the whole Bible. It's from 3 John, and it's just 3 John verse 4. There's only one chapter in 3 John. And this is what it says. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. John is an old man, and he writes, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. You know, I always have uh, three points. So here are my three points of why it is joyful for us to hear that our children are walking in the truth. First, it's good for them. Our children walking in the truth is good for them. Secondly, it's good for us. Our children walking in the truth is good for us. And finally, it's good for the world. Our children walking in the truth is good for the whole world. First, it's good for them. What does it mean to walk in the truth? Well, it means a ton of stuff, but I just want to focus on the three things that we've been talking about since we've introduced this theme of Transformed in 2018. Uh, and our children are taught this every week in the children's area. 
But the, the three remarkable claims of Christianity, first, is that you can know God. That's the gospel. And the gospel is just the greatest truth you could ever really understand. That you, even though you may be more flawed than you've ever wanted to admit to anyone, because of what Jesus did on the cross, you are more deeply loved than you've ever dared to dream. And if each one of our kids gets that truth deep down inside of them, there is nothing better. Because then they'll be able to, to admit who they really are. That's the truth about them. But they will also have the deep security of knowing that God loves them. That's the truth about God. And that truth, those two things, combine to absolutely change us. Martin Luther uh, had it right. He said that the essence of the gospel is that you are not loved because you're attractive. You are attractive because you are loved. And that's what we want all of our kids to understand. And as they understand that, then our kids can become both secure and humble at the same time, which is the most powerful combination that anybody can have, let alone a kid. So that's the first truth, that you can know God because of the gospel. The second remarkable truth of Christianity, a remarkable claim, is that you can change. Because you can know God, you can actually change. That God, and that idea is this, that God loves you just as you are, but He loves you too much to leave you just as you are. And so every week our kids are not just taught about the love of God, but they're taught about God's Word and the truth of God. And so every movement of, obe of obedience, like the movement of obedience last weekend with, with baptism, uh, moves you from what you are to what God made you to be, from who you are to who God made you to be. So every week our kids are reminded that not only are they loved by God, but they all co also can change more into what God has made them to be, wants them to be. And finally, the last great remarkable claim of Christianity is that because you can know God and because you can change, God can use you to change the world. God can actually use you to change the world. And with that, all of our kids are instilled with this idea that they are made with a purpose, a purpose that is greater, for, greater than themselves, that God is, has made good works to, for them to walk into. And that's why your kids will come home from time to time with some great project that they're doing or something that they're raising money for in vacation Bible camp or something because we want to instill in them that there is something that God has made them for, that God has gifted them for, that they can do with God, for God, uh, in their life. And so those, those are the things that they are taught. And when they walk in the truth, it's good for them. But our children walking in the truth is not just good for them. It's also good for us. And it's good for us in a couple of ways. It's good for us today because there is something about watching our children live in the truth and walk in the truth today that gives us great joy. If you've been watching the Olympics, you can see that there's only one thing better than doing well yourself, and that's watching your kids do well. Because in the Olympics, they'll see uh, somebody do something tremendous and they'll immediately switch the camera to their family and you watch them just jump up and down and just just they are filled with joy and that's the way it is for us when we see our kids walking in the truth of the gospel last weekend i had the the great opportunity to baptize my daughter rachel and we're going to have a, a few pictures up there and i want you to know that uh there are only two people in the whole world that had more joy than she did last weekend, and that's uh, my wife Karen and myself. Because there is joy that happens today when your kids walk in the truth. But there's also joy that happens tomorrow. It's good for tomorrow. Because the, the world our children make is the world we're going to be living in. Uh, their goodness will become our goodness. Their strength will become our strength. So when we hear our kids are walking in the truth, we are filled with joy, not just because it's good for them, but it's also good for us. And then finally, it's good for the world. It's good for the world. When our kids walk in the truth, it's good for the world. You know, I, this week, I've been uh, just, there's been a collision 
inside of me. It's probably been inside of you too. With the shooting at Parkland, Florida, and then the, the news of the the seventh grader at Jackson Middle School who shot himself in the restroom and died this week. And then the, the glorious, spontaneous baptisms that we experienced Saturday and Sunday of last weekend. And I feel those things happening inside of me. Jesus said in uh, the Sermon on the Mount that we are to be salt and light in our world. Salt in the first century wasn't just used as a flavor enhancer. It was used to, as something that would that would preserve, that would keep something from deteriorating. We're to be salt and light in a world that's increasingly dark and disintegrating. And our kids become part of that. This week I got an email uh, from a mom of a, of a ninth grader. Who's, she's a ninth grader at uh, Jackson High School. And, this, uh, and she is one of our kids here. And she and some of her friends just a few weeks ago decided to make up these uh, little bracelets, this white one here. It actually glows in the dark. It has uh, in it, uh, on the inside of it, is inscribed a verse. The verse is Psalm 33, 20. And this is the verse. It says, We wait in hope for the Lord, for He is our help and our shield. And so on the outside here, it has my hope, my help, and my shield. And these girls made up, they paid for it with their own money. They ordered 300 of these several weeks ago. And they were supposed to be delivered in a couple of weeks, but they got here early. And they got here just this week. And they took them to school to hand them out to kids. They, they ordered them because of uh, some suicides that had happened in their school. And wanted kids to know that there was something that was stronger that would hold them. And that's why they wanted it around their wrist, that it, they could have a hope and a help and a shield in Jesus. And so they took these 300 bracelets to school this week, and all 300 are gone like that. And they've ordered 500 more. Why? Because our children can be a little salt and a little light in a world that desperately needs something to give light in the midst of darkness and preservative in the midst of disintegration. And our kids just get to do that. So... Watching our kids walk in the truth gives us joy because it's good for them, it's good for us, it's good for the world. And we're concerned not just about, uh, about our own kids, but about uh, all kids. That's why our church is involved with all kinds of things around the world and in this area. This is also not just kids weekend, this is a Micah 6-8 weekend. Uh, Micah 6-8 weekend for us is taken from uh, a verse in the book of Micah. It says, uh, he has told you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God. It's a weekend where uh, we end up taking an offering, and all of the offering that's collected this weekend goes to a particular ministry. We give it all away. We started doing this several years ago. We realized if we could do 52 weeks of ministry with 49 weeks of income, we could give three weekends away completely. Last year, uh, through our Micah 6-8 weekends, we gave over $800,000 to different ministries. And that's because of your generosity in the other 49 weeks and not just your generosity in these three. But uh, since this is Kids Weekend, we wanted to, to introduce you to ministries that have to do with children. And so I'm going to, uh, if you'll, when you came in, you were handed a card like this. I want you to take out this card. Uh, because all of our Micah 6-8 weekends, we try to I invite you to do one of three things, or all three, three things, and it's pray, give, go. Everything you give will go to these ministries, but you can uh, pray for one of the ministries. If you fill it out, you check a box, uh, pray, you drop it in the box on the way out, then you'll get pinged on your email uh, once a quarter or once a month, just giving you specific prayer requests for that particular ministry. If you want to go and get a hands-on experience with one of these ministries, you check that box. And there, there's a table out in the atrium you can go to uh, if you want to go see one of these ministries or be involved in it. Here are the three ministries. The first is Cosina. Cosina is a coalition of, uh, of children in need association. It's, a, it's an organization in Haiti that we've been involved with for a while. It's an amazing place. You know, I, I've been there, and actually, 
there are over 200 of us uh, who attend this church who have been on a mission trip to this place. It's, uh, there's a school in Wanamanth, uh, Haiti, that has 2,400 kids all getting this Christian education, all getting uh, a, me- a, a warm meal uh, once a day. Uh, they get medical treatment. Uh, they are actually, it is changing their future, and through them, then uh, a change in the whole country. And that's the vision. Uh, actually, you know, we have this, the, the, the mosaic of a tree. Every time somebody comes to Christ, we put a leaf on the tree out in the atrium. The first 17 leaves uh, happened from a mission trip that we took to Haiti, and 17 of the children came to Christ through that ministry. So uh, that's uh, Cosina. That's one of the ministries. We are also having a mission trip to Haiti that you can go on. Uh, there's uh, information out in the atrium about that. The second ministry is called AOET. That's a ministry in Uganda. It's called Action Empowerment. Um, AOET is led by a man named Sam Tushabi, and really part of our Micah 6-8s came from, from Sam Tushabi. I met him o- over in Uganda. Uh, Uganda has been devastated by the AIDS crisis. There are uh, more than a million orphans uh, in Uganda. And uh, Sam started taking care of some of the orphans, and he ended up with 5,000 children that he was caring for. And he uh, actually came to the States. I met him over in Uganda, but he came to the States, and he emailed me. He was driving from California uh, across the States, stopping at churches, kind of cold calling, asking for money for his orphans. And when he got here, we weren't prepared to do anything for him. And I had him sit in this front row. But I asked, uh, at the end of the third service, I had a bucket up here that was part of a prop for the message that week. And so uh, I said at the end of the service, hey, if anybody wants to give to Sam's ministry, then you can go ahead and come up and just put some money in the bucket. And at the end, of people were, were just lined up, and people gave $10,000 to Sam. And that's when I thought, man, there are people that long to give uh, to these ministries. And what if we could uh, arrange it so we could give a whole offering so that Sam wouldn't have to come and beg people to support his ministry? So AOET, they do a similar thing as they do in Haiti. Uh, They have a school. They have medical care. They also have taken over 200 kids and put them into foster homes with families because they're starting this program where they actually uh, make the children a part of another family, like an adoption, a permanent foster home. All right? So that's a second ministry that your offering will go to uh, this weekend. And just like in Uganda... Uh, Uganda has been devastated by the AIDS crisis. This area has been devastated by the, uh, the opiate crisis. Uh, foster care has exploded. There are a thousand children waiting for foster care because of opiate addiction. And so our church wants to get more involved with that. I want our church to get more involved in that. And so we have uh, caring for kids out there in the atrium, and you can stop by that table and please uh, consider that. Consider being a a respite parent or a foster parent that can actually care for a child who needs you now, who needs you now, all right? So that's going to be the Micah 6-8, and the reason that we're doing it is because we have no greater joy than to hear that our children are walking in the truth Because to hear that our children are walking in the truth is good for them. It's good for us, but it's also good for the whole world. And we want to be a part of that and transformed in 2018. All right? So I'm going to uh, close in prayer. We're going to have uh, the ushers come and take the offering. You can be filling out the card. You can fill out the card, and you can uh, drop it in the box in the back when you leave. Uh, make sure that the, your email is legible so we can make, sh- make sure you get the prayer request and all that. All right, but thanks. After that, we're going to have more worship and uh, more instruction about how we're going to do ministry here a little bit the way the kids do it in the kids' area uh, as we do uh, as we finish up the service. All right? Would you pray with me? Uh, Father in heaven, we come to you. And uh, you know that we, uh, we love our children. We know that you love uh, children too. 
And you know what shape the world is in. And the only hope for the world is for uh, children, our children, to walk in the truth. For us to walk in the truth, teach them to walk in the truth. And as they do it, then our world will be transformed. I pray that you'll work through them. I pray that you'll help us. Then as we uh, give, as we pray, as we go, I pray that we will be able to be a positive impact uh, on children's lives, both here and what happens here at Christ Community Chapel, uh, locally what happens with foster kids, and then globally what happens uh, in Haiti and in Uganda. Thanks for your grace to us. Thanks for the opportunity uh, to partner with you in doing something for children right here, right now. We pray this in, your, in Jesus' name. Amen.